Train the muscles, not the joints. Welcome back to Natural Land Bodybuilding. Mountain. And today I'm gonna to talk to you a little bit of rocks are in my way. All these exercise rocks. And today I'm gonna to talk to you a little bit about dumbbell presses and what the biggest mistake I see people do with dumbbell pressing. Now the standard protocol for a bench press, usually, and this is what leads to the problem, is that people are taught that they have to touch the chest with the bar and then extend all the way up to the top and that is considered a full rep. Now, I'm not saying that range of motion is always wrong for everybody, but touching the bar to the chest may give somebody the illusion that they're supposed to go down as far as they can go until there's some sort of stop that happens that doesn't come from their own muscles. It comes from the barbell itself, right? So once they go to dumbbell presses, what ends up happening is that because the bar does not touch their chest, they feel that, hey, I can do extra range of motion, therefore I should without thinking about whether it is keeping the tension on the pec muscle or whether it's transferring that tension into the joint capsule of the shoulder or into the tendon insertions in the shoulder from the pecs, right? So you'll start to see more pec tears, more shoulder inflammation and more bursitis type of injuries from this if you're not able to maintain tension on the muscles, including the rotator cuff muscles, right?
that for uh, set number 10. Back in the day, there were a lot of guys that would come up to me in the gym and say, geez, I always got shoulder pain. You're so lucky, Jason, you don't have shoulder pain. And then I'd say, well, what are you doing on your bench press? Well, first of all, they'd always touch their chest with the bar. And I'm like, okay, now show me your dumbbell press. Then of course, every single time they come down to the chest and then boom, that little bit of extra. They'd always have to get that little bit of extra range of motion in just to virtue signal how good their range of motion is. And then inevitably the next day their joints would flare up. So I'm not saying this is always the cause of a problem, but if you are not able to maintain tension in the muscle belly and it's transferring onto the tendons or the joint capsule, then you are for sure going to injure yourself at some point with dumbbell pressing. You're either going to have a pec problem or you're going to have a, a shoulder inflammation problem. And this is where I see a lot of people uh, mess themselves up in the gym. So when I do dumbbell presses on YouTube, people always be like, oh, you, know, you got to do full range of motion. You have to go all the way down or farther down. I'm going as far down as I can while maintaining proper tension in the muscle bellies. And then when I come up with the dumbbells, and this is the other mistake I see, is that people feel that they need to extend the elbows and then touch the dumbbells together. Well, from here to here, there's really no tension on the chest. There's no tension at all on the chest. All there is is basically a glorified isometric contraction. So it's not putting any extra stress on the muscles you want to hit by locking out and coming inwards. The other thing is, is that when you lock out the elbows, that's when the shoulder joint and the elbow joints are the most vulnerable because you're resting on the joints at that top part. And by doing so, you may be jujitsuing yourself, such as hyperextending an elbow, or just putting more stress on the shoulders that contributes to overall fatigue, but not necessarily fatigue of the muscles you wanna hit, which is usually the pecs when you're doing uh, flat presses or flat dumbbell presses. More cobra chickens everywhere, hey? Eh? Planting landmines and bombs all over the place. You think you got a wingspan? Look at this, hey? Eh? Look at that wingspan, huh? Look at that. Impressive, isn't it? You guys aren't even paying attention. Like, no clapping, nothing? Just crickets, huh? You guys are not bodybuilding fans, huh? No? Bunch of ingrates. Hey, they don't appreciate a good bodybuilder when they see it. So yeah, if you want to avoid injuries, or at least minimize them anyway, you want to always be conscious of where that tension is playing out. And during the dumbbell press, this is the biggest mistake I've seen, and I've seen a lot of guys get injured from this over the years. Now. The caveat on all this is that when you're using lighter weight, such as something you can easily do 50 or 60 reps with, you can get away with a different range of motion because the stress is not the same on the joint capsule, right? It becomes exponential once you go up in weight into the five rep ranges or 10 rep ranges or 15 rep ranges. So you're going to notice that although you may enjoy stretching, when you're stretching, obviously that is a different type of tension than when you're trying to lift heavy. Right, stretching movements, the first thing any physio guy would tell you is that if you're stretching, don't be bouncing aggressively or putting extra tension on that stretched muscle, right? Because it's already got a lot of tension on it and if you overstretch it or put too much tension on it, you're going to tear it. So it's the same thing when it comes down to your range of motion. There are stretching ranges of motion that are more rehabilitative, whereas you use super, super light weights and then you may go through a more aggressive range of motion to stretch something out. And then there is the higher amount of effort ranges of motion where say you're hitting failure within 10 to 30 reps and you're using a heavier weight to do so. During those circumstances, you need a different level of accountability to where are those tensions playing out. You can't just rest on the joint capsules, right? So say if I'm squatting and I sit on my calves with 500 pounds, my kneecaps will fall off. But if I'm just using my body weight, I can sit on my calves in a deep squat position and there's no knee problem. So it's like that in this case, right? There are exponential forces that play out and that become extremely huge under certain ranges at the extended range of motion. And it doesn't offer you any extra benefit when you're using heavier or uh, medium intensity type of weight. If anything, it just injures you and, and doesn't rehabilitate the area at all. So if you wanna do rehabilitation, then yeah, you'd use super light weights, weights that you could do at least 50 or 60 reps with or something like that. And then you would basically go a little bit beyond your range of motion if you feel still that the tension is on the muscles and not on the joint capsule. Once you start feeling that tension on the joint capsule, that's it. That means you've gone too low and you need to adjust the range of motion in order to compensate for that. 
mountain. So yeah, I hope this helps you out in your training. Thanks a lot for watching. And if you need to get hold of me, just go to naturalgallantbodybuilding.com and thanks to the Patreon supporters. And if you enjoy this type of content and you want to hear a podcast about it, I do have a podcast available. There's a link down in the description. Those contributors who are second tier and higher have access to the Natural Gallant Bodybuilding Podcast. Mountain. Natural land.